in the gym with uh, Robert Lloyd Taylor, the coach, the promoter and manager with uh, Robert Lloyd Taylor Promotions. Uh, how are you, Rob? And how have you sort of been during the um, you know this uh, global lockdown? Yeah, I've been okay, thank you. Um, nothing's really changed me for lockdown because, as you know, I'm a heating engineer as well, so I've still been working. Uh, it's been a necessity to keep people safe. So I've been out and about the, the whole time. Of course, and during the lockdown, have you been training also have all of your stable sort of uh, Aaron Sinclair, yeah. of course, Lewis Lai, uh, your son Robert yeah. Lloyd Taylor Jr. and of course, uh, Mr. Punjabi Pitbull himself. Yeah, have you all yeah. guys been training together still? Not together, no. So everyone's been training, but doing their own thing. So they've had a small little plan that they had to stick to. They've been doing that. My son, Robert, he's been with me. so. You know, he's been training. So you sort of like supervise their schedule in terms of you tell them you know, what to yeah, do yeah. and what, what yeah. schedule to stick to in terms yeah, of yeah. keeping them taking over during the, the lockdown period. Yeah, yeah. But, but then the nice thing for me is because I haven't had to train them in the morning or in the evening, I've had time to train myself. Oh, so of course. I've, so I've started getting back into shape myself now. Yes, and you're looking very, very, very good shape indeed. Getting there slowly. During lockdown. And also, uh, you know, now that sort of um, when once things will sort of come back to normal slowly, so we hope, fingers crossed. Yeah. Do you have any plans to sort of resume your uh, shows? Because we went to your last yeah, one and yeah, it was yeah. a real yeah. success. We really enjoyed that show. Yeah. It was an exciting show. Yeah. So do you have sort of future plans during the year, maybe this year or next? Yeah, uh, 100%. Like, we've been speaking, we have to get the boys out this year. Have to. Whether that's on my you, don't, you don't want them to be so rusty for too long. No, 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 get, no. Get they, they have to be out this year. Um, I'd like to say twice, but if, if it's once, it'd be once. We're going to try for two times, whether it's on our show or if we can get them elsewhere, on another part on of another the show, show or even abroad. If you know, if that's what it requires, then that's and what if the conditions do. allow, etc. Yeah, for yeah. It. Right, and in terms of, uh, you know, if you actually had a personal choice, would you prefer to be a full-time trainer or a full-time promoter, or both? Um, the, tra the training side is me. Uh, promotion sides, I've only done the promotions, you know, b b it's, it's needed. But my thing is the, the training, you know, the, the teaching, the nurturing. And there's the management side of it as well, of course. Yeah, yeah, so that, that goes on with the trainer. Um, that's what my passion is and where I, I think I'm um, most valuable. Promotion side, you know, I think I said before, we got to promote the promoter's license because the, the stable was growing. Rather than keep going to different promoters with our hands out, we then could put on the, the shows where we want, you know, when we want, and which whichever which area, because typically uh, our guys have to travel to your pool quite often. Of and course, for like, Green. Yeah, for Adam Sinclair, yeah. he's in Maidenhead. So for him to sell tickets, it's, you know, it can be quite difficult. It can be quite tough, right? Because yeah. you have to expect the fans to make that yeah, track all yeah. the way down to Daphne yeah. Green, of course. So really, like our niche, we're uh, Middlesex, West London based. That's where predominantly our, our shows are going to be staged. Our first show is in Maidenhead, so that worked out perfect for um, Aaron. Aaron, yes, because he's like yeah. a local, he's a home, yeah, hometown yeah. player. And that, Literally, that's, that is in his backyard. God. Um, so that's our little niche, but the promoter side, if I didn't have to do it, I wouldn't, but it, it was required at the time, so yeah, we, we've gone along with it. And also, uh, so what would your uh, advice be for any sort of young and up-and-coming fighters, you know, wanting to sort of turn pro, what would you sort of advise them, what's the best thing they can do to sort of become I, professional? I'd say, you know, you, you have to have the, the team around you, a caring, knowledgeable team and basically be a uh, sponge to t what they got to teach, just absorb it all. But you have to make sure you have the, the right team. Um, you know, you want to get your training right, your nutrition, your, your recovery, your technique, you know, your strength work. You, you need that good team to, to help take you through the levels. Of course, and uh, also now that you are sort of uh, a promoter, you know, how is this experience different than you, know, you being a former pro fighter yourself? Is it different being on the other side of the, the rope, so to speak? Yeah, it's headache. <laughs> it's headache yeah. Yeah, yeah, so you remember um, like your first show, you know, there's yeah. so much things going on all at yeah, the same yeah. time and it can be quite overwhelming, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the training and managing was, uh, it, it come like, uh, not a shock, but all of a sudden you've got like more kids that you've got to look after. And then 
drop the promotions on top, oh, it's a completely different headache. There's the different responsibilities, making yeah, sure yeah. that every little piece of the jigsaw sort of slots in on the night and everything yeah, goes yeah. so smoothly, right? Yeah, because I, mean, I have to juggle it all myself. I do get uh, some family and a couple of friends to help out here and there. But ultimately, it, it all falls down. You're onto the, my you're the man in, yeah, the, the, yeah. The, 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 the buck stops with you, right? Yeah, like in, yeah. In that respect, wow. And also, sort of being an ex fighter yourself, would you say that that sort of helps you, you know, get a better understanding of, you know, how to sort of train your fighters and how to sort of, you know, mold them and guide them in their particular careers? Yeah, a hundred percent, I believe it does. I was always a, a thinking fighter, so that de definitely helps set me up, you know, to pass on the technical side. Um, but also, I, I always say, I didn't uh, fulfil my full potential, no, nowhere near, I believe. But in my short fallings, it's just equipped me so much more better to pass on to the people I'm working with now. You know, I, I, I accept it. I, I didn't do it. I, I accept responsibility, but now I have so much more knowledge to, to serve the people I work with so much more better. So it makes that, it easier for them to sort of avoid certain pitfalls, etc. Yeah, because yeah, you see them already, definitely. that you've experienced certain things yeah, and you yeah. know how to yeah. maneuver around those yep, obstacles. Yep. Fantastic. And also, you know, what can you tell us about, you know, your lovely gym here, New Kings Boxing Gym, and also, yeah. you know, how did the uh, New Kings Boxing promotions and management come about? So, sort of like the beginning of it. Well, the, we start with the training management. So, I was still active as a boxer, but then I was having thoughts about calling it a day, and then the, the most natural thing was to move on to the, the training and the managing. So, I think a year before I retired, I actually got my trainers and managers license. So it was just sitting there, not doing anything. Um, then I, I had an injury, well, I cracked my rib. Oh wow. And then the fight fell through, not because of the rib. Um, Other reasons. Yeah. So then I just thought, you know what, it's probably now is the time to, to call it a day. And literally, as I called it a day, I had someone come to me, just ask my advice, you know, what did you do, turn over, stay amateur, what do you think I need to work on? So I started helping him, uh, trained him for years at amateur before he turned over. Um, he progressed well, but in the space of no time at all, um, that's Mitchell Preedy. His brother then come to me, and then in the space of no time at all, I had like seven boxes underneath me. So um, it, it, it sort of multiplied very quickly from it, the, it did, one person to... Yeah, yeah. And then to answer your question about the, the gym, we was training at the gym in Norfolk. Uh, the gym owner just all of a sudden packed up and left, closed down the gym. Um, so we started using the, the gym, someone else was here before. And then he upped and left. And then literally, as he left, he passed me the number to the landlord, called the landlord, and that was it. And you're saying that, we, right, we, that's we, it, I'm yeah, moving in. We, we was in, we was in. Fantastic, and also now that you have uh, quite a uh, you know, diverse, uh, wide stable of really, yeah. really good fighters, are you sort of uh, open to taking any more fighters in and managing any further fighters, or, or have you sort of reached your... No, 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 we're, um, as we're coming out of lockdown, you're going to see we're going to be doing a hell of a lot more, uh, expanding, speaking to uh, quite a few more boxers uh, wanting to come in, so... You should yeah. see some news on that. Join the, join the team, basically. You know. Yeah, yeah. You should see some news on that first. I'll give it to you first if you want. Oh, fantastic. Once yeah. the deal is done. Um, obviously, I can't take on too many people training myself because there's yeah. not enough time in the day. And what you have to give, I wouldn't be able to give it all to, if I had too yeah, many so people. Yeah, so you want to make sure that you're effective yeah. at uh, sort of uh, managing yeah. everyone in the sort yeah, of a, yeah. a similar way. So we've got two more coaches at the gym. One's in the process of getting his, uh, his professional training license. He's already an amateur coach. So we've got Andy Sinclair, Aaron Sinclair's dad. Aaron's dad, of course, we've seen him earlier on training yeah. with Aaron in yeah, his fight yeah. camp for his previous yeah, fight. Yeah. And we've got Mabs, who's our amateur trainer. Uh, he's gone from strength to strength. Uh, I don't know if you met him before, but he, he's, a, he's a good guy. I think guy. we've seen him in the gym the last time we, we yeah. ordered a media workout. I think yeah, it was yeah. there. And then potentially, um, Means that I'm having at the moment, there might be a third coach coming through. Oh, wow, fabulous. So, yeah. There are more coaches, of course, that sort of frees you up to sort yeah. of delegate and manage things yeah, further. Yeah. And uh, just a very quick one in terms of at some point when boxing is now reopening, there's some really big fights on the horizon. Just your quick thoughts about uh, Triple D, Daniel Dubois versus Joe Joyce. You know, what do you think about that? 
I'd lean slightly towards Joe Joyce. The Juggernaut. Je- just for experience. Although uh, the Bois is a very good talent. Uh, if, very young, isn't he? So yeah, yeah. If I was managing him, I'd want him to have a, a little, little bit more experience. Uh, before maybe, he faces people of Joe's Yeah, maybe, caliber. maybe two, two, three more fights before. Um, I think it's a, it's a brilliant fight for the fans to watch. Uh, yeah. I, I'd lean slightly towards Joe Joyce. And also maybe into 2021, there were some rumours of Tyson Fury facing Anthony Joshua. Yeah. What do you think could happen there? Because that's the big one that all the fans would want to see, of course. Yeah, the yeah. Big heavyweight showdown. Yeah. I'm a big fan of all the British heavyweights. Um, I'm a massive fan of Tyson Fury. Um, I have bet against him a couple of times. Not physically, because I'm not a better man. But I'd lean... Towards, slightly towards Joshua for that. AJ. Yeah. Although I, I rate Tyson Fury very, very highly. Um, Joshua as well. I, I, I'd like to see all of our heavyweights fight each other. You know, there, there's a. Because they're such good ones, right? With Dylan yeah, yeah. White, AJ, the, I mean, and Fury all being in the mix. Yeah, you could have it here with like the, the four kings, you know, with Leonard, Hagler, Hearns, and Duran. So like a British version of it. Much. Yeah, that that would be such a great time for boxing and to, to draw in like a bigger crowd. I think they'll sell out Wembley quite easily, I would imagine. Yeah. Or if, some other open space venue, yeah. I'm sure, depending on the uh, the rules. If you could imagine like the, the heavyweights, you could have live fight after live fight after live, live fights. What that would do for boxing would be amazing. Fantastic. Um, I think it would be a really uh, big, enjoyable event for yeah. all of the British fans who are probably desperate for some sports fight right about now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, also, Rob, if you yourself were still a fighter today, you know, who, who, would, who would you choose yourself as a, as a trainer to train you? Who would be your pick of the current? Uh, could be British, could be American, could be anyone. Mm. Um, I try and think of someone new. You got me there. Oh, um, really? sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to propose a, a tricky question. I've, I've had a few few trainers throughout my career, so I don't think it'd be fair if I chose one of them. So I'm trying to think of someone new who I'd like who, to who, um, who, who I would like to train with. Um, I'm not sure you, you, you you've got me. Um, How was your experience being able to train with uh, Adam Booth, the British trainer, and you know did you learn different things from from the man because he's quite uh, renowned for being quite. Tactically yeah, yeah. astute. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I learned a hell of a lot from Adam. Um, particularly, you know, it, the more uh, science of uh, strength, conditioning, um, nutrition. Um, like, when, when I first got with Adam, so early on in my career, I, I trained extremely, extremely hard. And whenever I fall, as a professional, I was always the most unfit on the card. Oh wow, and so it's sort of overtrained in a, in a, in a yeah. way. Yeah, and then people always like, just see me as being lazy, like in the gym. So the, the answer was, you've got to train harder. So now I train harder, and the more harder I train, the less fit I'd be on, on fight night. Uh, the funny thing was, most of the time when I had a short, short camp, I'd be all right. But then when I was training like hard for a big camp, I'd, I'd throw, one hard combination and literally I'd, I'd be spent. Um, so at the time my nutrition wasn't great. I was doing a hell of a lot of uh, running, loads of... Like road work basically, a lot of road Yeah, work. yeah, loads of circuit training. Um, not specific to what I do when I was actually fighting. Fighting. So when I'd done something explosive, it, it would just deplete me completely. Completely. Yeah. So when I got to Adam, you know, I learned about training the, the Create Energy System and before long, you know, it, it wasn't a factor again, like with the fitness. Um, I'd never really done weights until I met Adam, um, so I learned, learned along, a lot along them lines. Um, te- technique and stuff, I, I really enjoyed it, um, having a different insight to um, what I learned previously. So it, it was good, and I think the camps that we went through were world-class training camps. So, so in you got terms to sort of that, experience what that whole yeah, setup is like, right? Yeah, yeah. So for me, that that was um, invaluable. That 
And also talking about like sort of world class uh, training camps, how was your experience of like training and watching a pride and David Hay in action? Yeah, yeah. Was that quite an so, interesting insight? Yeah, so again it's just, it's the same thing. So, you know, the the professional training camp, well you know, I, I hadn't seen anything like that before. Everything was planned, you know, to to the T. Um, it's almost like a military operation, right? Everything yeah, yeah. like everyone had sort of yeah. their roles and Yeah. So, I've seen the Haymaker gym and it seems mm -hmm. a very professional place in terms yeah, of the yeah. way it's set up and yeah. everyone sort of you know works to very sort of tight rigid yeah, structure. Yeah. It looks you like know, they everyone knows your role, everyone knows what you're doing, you know, it's like so a well oiled machine yeah. that's, 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 yeah, that's, yeah. that's the feeling that the visitor gets when, yeah. when, when they come in through the doors. So to be able to absorb all of that and you know, and be able to pass on even just a fraction of that is it's it's brilliant for my guys. Fantastic, of course, and also you know, sort of you know, now that you've seen like sort of David Hay up close and personal when he was in his prime, what do you think would have happened if Hay had taken on a, a prime Tyson Fury? So that both of them at their prime, do you think Hay would have been able to? Both, both of them at their prime, yes, or, or at the time. Uh, sort of in their prime uh, when Hay was in his prime and Tyson Fury is in his prime. Do you think Hay would still stand a chance? Because it is a cruiserweight who, who sort of went up to heavy. So yeah. Do you think he gives away too much sort of uh, um, height and uh, weight to, to Fury? If you'd have asked me, if you'd have thought when they were scheduled to, I'd have said, uh, hey, uh, hands down. Because the but prime David Hay was a scary fighter. He, yeah, he, yeah. he was so oh, yeah, viciously yeah. explosive. Yeah. Like he, could, he could set a trap, knock you out with just one single yeah. punch, and you couldn't tell where the angle was coming from. Yeah, so yeah. It must have been very tough fighting someone like that, because how do you prepare for someone like yeah, the prime yeah. David Hay, right? Yeah. Um, Tyson, Tyson, I'd say I'd love to see that fight. Um, I'm still on the fence with that one. Oh, I see. Also, very it, uh, it, it it, choice. As I say, it's hard uh, to tell, of course. Yeah, I do rate Tyson Fury very highly, and the, the thing that stands out the most is his uh, mental strength, his, his uh, mental fortitude. Yeah, it seems um, incredibly tough, right? That he's recovered yeah. from things that you'd think most other people would have given up in yeah, those types yeah. of situations. So yeah. yeah. And, and it seems the, the bigger the occasion, the more higher he the rises. The higher he rises, right? Yeah, so yeah. He's, he's, he's sort of the man for the big occasion, yeah, so to yeah. speak. Um, also, sort of, if you were to ever sort of make a comeback, you know, was there any one particular person who you would have loved to have shared the ring with? Mm, of today's fighters? It could be today's or sort of, you know, of days past, days gone past. Um. Madonna. <laughs> you know, the mix of the, the boxer and the, the fighter. The fighter. Yeah, uh, oh yeah, I would have liked something like that, I think. That would have been uh, very, very interesting. And of yeah. course, the, the other thing I would ask is sort of, you know, who were the fighters you grew up with uh, sort of watching and sort of enjoyed watching when you were sort of uh, a, a younger man? Uh, I used to love Chris Eubank Sr. Like Senior, when I was course, younger. Yeah. You know, the whole, the whole posturing. Um, a man for the big occasion, wasn't he, Eubank yeah, Sr.? Yeah. He was like sort of selling you the show as yeah, much as. Yeah. Yeah. But the suits, the monocles, the yeah. canes, the, yeah. the, the whole yeah. lot. It was very theatrical, right? Yeah. I mean, that, that was a great time for boxing, especially with it being on Treasure TV, so everyone yeah. had access to it. Exactly, and all the big um, big fighters fought each other, like, yeah. you know, yeah. Ben and Eubank had their sort yeah. of uh, two fights, etc. And there's yeah. Steve Collins and all these other people yeah. in yeah. the mix. Yeah. So. I mean, unfortunately, that's starting to, to phase out now. You know, things going to uh, streaming, pay per view. Um, also, Lynx Lewis. Uh, of course. Yeah. Top top five heavyweights of all time for me, Lennox Lewis. Um, yeah, you, you used to watch Nigel Benn. Um, yeah, of course, and there's a lot of uh, sons now in, in boxing. Now, Nigel's got his son, yeah. Connor, and of course, uh, Chris Eubank Jr. has yeah, followed yeah. his dad in Switzerland. And you have your son, yeah, yeah, Robert yeah. Lloyd Taylor Jr. <laughs> as well. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. So, yeah. so tell us about sort of his progress in terms of, you know, have you sort of watched him sort of develop and you know, sort of hone his skills over the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the many um, years that you watched him? Yeah, Rob's doing really well. Um, he leans more towards a, a professional style, um, which he, he's fine is not suiting him too well with the, to, to, the, amateurs. To the amateurs. Yes, of course. Yeah, I mean, he starts coming on as the fight's finishing, which you can't do. Well, because um, the, the amateur bout is shorter in, in, yeah, in, in yeah. the nature that the rounds are two yeah. minute rounds, I do believe, rather than two, three. Two minutes, yeah, two, two, so two minutes, three, yeah. three two minute rounds. Oh. Um, but, you know, he, he's in the gym all the time. Anyone who comes up to spa, he gets a spa. You know, he holds his own with the, the professionals. So he's doing really well. I'm, I'm really excited for his, his future. Um, you know, he's at the age of trying to see, like, 
what he wants to do, like career-wise, but he's more leaning towards boxing now. You know, he didn't want to go to university. Um, initially, he was going to study physiotherapy, but he decided against that. He wants to... There have been some boxers that have sort of mm. gone to university who have studied physiotherapy yeah. and things yeah, like that, yeah. sports science, etc., yeah, and then yeah. also are yeah. professional boxers, so that could be something that he can do at some point later yeah, as well, yeah. because there's always yeah. open university, etc. So yeah, yeah. No, de definitely. But he's got his um, heart set on the boxing now. Um, He's got know, the right environment around him, right? Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. He definitely succeed. He, he works with me, doing all his boxing. Then he works with Pete Marcarciano for his uh, strength and conditioning. Uh, if you don't know Pete Marcarciano, he, he's a great man. He, he's one of my five mentors. Um, you know, he worked with Adam Booth, David De Hay. Fantastic. I, so I don't know if I can mention who he's working with now. Right, but the sports, um, science, so the sports science is on point in terms of like his... his yeah, his, yeah, his he's goals. a very, very knowledgeable man. Fantastic. And uh, sort of any sort of um, last words towards the, the fans of the channel or just, you know, fans of boxing for sort of hopefully looking forward to seeing New Kings Boxing return? Yeah, I'd say, um, you know, we're all going through the same thing. So we all got to stay strong. You know, I'm sure we can be able to put on a, a show for everyone soon and not just show they're going to keep getting bigger and better. There's a, a lot of plans in the, the pipeline. Right. Um, there should be more more boxers. Uh, you know, as the big ones are going through, they're going to be stepping up, fighting for titles. Um, there's a lot in the pipeline for the shows as well to jazz up the shows to make them a lot better. Yeah, uh, the last shows were really nice. We had the DJ, etc. Yeah. Had some nice music pumping there, yeah. so that the crowd were really thoroughly yeah. entertained. So. The DJ will be there again. That that'd be a basic setup for for the, the promotions. Um, but it's a lot more that's going to be happening. Um, all being planned behind the scenes now. As you know, our second show got cancelled because, because of. Yeah. Um, so we're itching to get back to to put that one back on. That was at Harrow Leisure Centre. Um, um, that was a seven fight card. You had two heavyweights yes. on. Uh, that's always exciting, and Lewis yeah. Lai is always exciting when he's on the yeah, show. Yeah. Like we've seen him how a yeah. tremendous heavy puncher he is. Yeah, yeah. And I think one of the fights he had at the Lee Valley Athletic Leisure mm -hmm. Centre that sticks to our mind with yeah. Lewis. That that was probably a fight of the year yeah. that I've personally seen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not on telly, but actually physically yeah. seen because that was that was yeah. a vicious, vicious fight. It was an absolute tear up for all of the rounds they lasted. Yeah. It was an absolute all out war, and I, I couldn't believe that that guy was meant to be a journeyman. He he, Clearly he, he wasn't. wasn't a journeyman. He wasn't. That, that, no, that was a, a slight from the promoter. But he could have made that so much more easy for himself. But he didn't want to win like that. So he put it all on the line that he did. Yeah, it's definitely one of the more entertaining fights that we have on our channel yeah. that we like, like, yeah. like to sort of revisit and look yeah. back on. But yeah, like any time those fights, when Fuad fight, even yeah, Aaron, yeah. how precise and technical he is, yeah. it's a delight to watch. Yeah. So we definitely look forward to seeing all of the new kings. Uh, a lesser table. boxer would have folded from the shots what Lewis landed. That, that guy, his chin he, he, was 10 he, out of 10. He, he, yeah, he threw the kitchen sick at the guy. Yeah, he, yeah. But he, I think he was South American, if I'm not mistaken. No, Romanian. Oh, was it Romanian? Okay, yeah. but he, he, he looks so tough. Like, yeah, he was yeah. able to take shots and yeah. try to give some back. And I was like, wow, like, this is yeah, yeah. not what you'd expect from a sort of a typical journeyman performance. Yeah, yeah. This guy came to fight, yeah. this guy came to win. Yeah, and he yeah. believed he could win. I was like, yeah. wow. So to me, it felt like a test for Lewis because yeah. he sort of so found out his own metal and yeah, that yeah. he could take a shot, that yeah, he could yeah. sort of you know deal with the pressure coming yeah, at him. Yeah. So I think it was probably a very good fight for him in terms yeah, of his confidence no, definitely, going definitely. forward. So fantastic. Well, thank you very much for your time, Robert yeah, Lloyd Taylor. Lovely, lovely. We look forward to you. seeing you soon again on the yeah, channel definitely. and look forward to your shows, hopefully very soon in the future. Yeah. Cheers. Lovely. TNT TV. Thank you. Thank you.